This week on Midwest Outdoors, Mark Strand is hunting pheasant on public land in Minnesota. We head to southern Missouri for an epic duck hunt. And Katie Corget takes a late season trip to the Mississippi River. You're watching Midwest Outdoors. Since 1967, helping you enjoy the outdoors. Sponsored in part by Rapala, Abu Garcia, Wildlife Research Center, Huntworth Gear, and Flow Fast Fuel Transfer Systems. Hey, this is Mark Strand, Midwest Outdoors, and today we are down on a very beautiful mid-November day. The pheasant season's been open for a little while, so the birds are not exactly unwild, but I got my little puppy dog, Willow Girl. She's a female German short hair pointer, just turned one year old. We're gonna hunt public land, going after wild roosters, and we're gonna see what she can do. So are you ready, kid? So this is a good time now. Let's talk about how to hunt with your dog and how to direct, how to control it, how to run it. So Willow here is quartering, they call it, back and forth in front of me. What I'm doing is I'm trolling her nose along the edge of this cornfield off to my left. I control her from a strategy standpoint. In other words, I don't let her go somewhere that we don't have permission for. I don't let her chase after a deer, stuff like that. And I also put her into places where I want her to go, that I want us to hunt. But other than that, I'm watching her all the time. Watching the dog, I'm looking up to look for wild flushing birds ahead of us. And I'm also looking at the cover and deciding where I will send her if she's not on a bird. So I run the show when it's a strategy move, she runs it if she hits a bird. So she's pretty far over here and not real birdie. And so I'm gonna pull her, I'm using just the tone only on my collar. I'm gonna pull her over here by me because I want her closer to this edge of the corn, even more so. So I'm gonna show her where I wanna go by walking also. That's part of controlling the dog and sending her into where you want her to be. This is right on the edge of the corn, a very good possible holding spot for birds. Another thing that's important is I try to keep myself in position to shoot, even though I'm gonna wait for her to point, but if you're hunting with a flushing dog, you really have to keep yourself in position to shoot all the time and be looking to make sure it's gonna be a safe shot. And think about this, the wind is right in our face. Unless the cover dictates where the pheasant's gonna fly, it'll almost always fly with the wind. So the bird might get up, bank, and then go behind you in this case. Han, good girl. Good girl, Willow. Hey, we had a beautiful hunt this afternoon. We really enjoyed ourselves out on the big public lands. Willow did a nice job. I missed a good shot at a rooster. So we're gonna finish this day out with our friend Scott Rawl from Nobles County Pheasants Forever, and his brother Shane is also gonna join us. And the weather changed significantly. We got a lot of clouds coming in, it's windy. But Scott, might as well give her a shot anyways, right? We, we got great cover? Yeah, we do. We'll still be able to find some birds. All right, let's go get them. Right up. Willow, here, here. Good boy. Good boy. Here. Here. Good. Sit. Sit. Good. Drop. Drop. Good boy. Right there you go. Minnesota rooster. It's a beauty. Beautiful. How far ahead of you did you get up? A little too far. Okay. So it was, uh, for a split second, I might have had a shot at it, but um, I knew where you were. And I think I he was probably you. close to 50 yards for me. Was it really? And my little 16 managed That's to a, pop out and drop a nice my gun. surprise. <laughs> First that one, was so cool. I love it. I was eight feet ahead of him on the first shot and about 12 feet ahead of him on the second. We were really, And finally wow. caught up to him. Son of a gun, so. that was beautiful. 
Yeah, so it's turning into a nice hunt, and it's it's just the snow that was here on the opening weekend's all gone. It looks like fall again out it here. Does. It does. A little windy today. You know, it makes the very, birds a little jumpy. Yeah, it's but. very windy, right? That's. Uh, if you hunt in southwest Minnesota and you don't hunt in the wind, you don't hunt very often, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Way to go. All right, so might as well finish pushing this out to the end, huh? Just That's see what, what we'll we can do. Yep. We'll, right. we'll take it all the way right up to the other short grass, okay? Got it. Okay, boys. Find him. One in here. Find him right here in the corner. Shoot it! His dog, his dog was on it when it hit the ground. That was cool. That was a nice ending, right? Well, we had a wonderful time out here in Southwest Minnesota. Scott Rawl, our friend, who is the president of Nobles County Pheasants Forever, hosted us on this trip. I just wanna say, you don't have to go all the way to South Dakota to hunt pheasants, do you, Scott? We've got quality quality public lands down here and a, and a lot of them. Everybody's welcome. Come down and, and join us and, and uh, see what Southwest Minnesota has to offer. It's an undiscovered, wonderful prairie lands of Southwest Minnesota. So for Willow Girl, Scott Rawl, and Tracer Dog, and Tracer Dog, I'm Mark Strand for Midwest Outdoors and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Terry Middlestead with Midwest Outdoors. We're down to Boot Hill, Missouri today, uh, doing a little duck hunting before the season closes out with some good friends from Minnesota and Kentucky. We're hoping to have a good time. Here they come. come in and we got two. When these teal come in, they come in low and they come in quick and you gotta be ready to shoot them. Came around uh, the third time, pulled up right on him. Unloaded gun. I'm glad the other guys had their guns loaded. Yeah, we got two mallards, missed the third one. Dang it. Get ready. We're hunting with the new flambeau decoys this morning and the new UV paint on them. Helped us pull in a bunch of ducks this morning to get and now that the sun came out, the realisticness of these decoys has brought that last flock of mallards right into us and it was our fault. We called the shot low early and we didn't shoot as good as we should have. Next bunch we'll get them. Aren't they pretty? Nice shot. 
out, Cody. Well, that block just come out of action, come out of nowhere, and they cut right in and did it perfect. We waited to call the shot on them, and we got a few more out of there this time. It worked out perfect. They worked out perfect. Them birds just committed to the decoys like it was nothing else. Flambo's really got a good deal going on. Terry, tell me about what we have going on out here today. Well, what well, we're set up on the old St. Francis River system. And we got a little bit of everything out here today. A little bit of white to add some color, divers. We've been shooting a few divers. Just as many decoys as you can get out there. I try to get out there. The wind at our backs and it's working. Yeah, you don't always get that wind at your back, so sometimes it, they come in from that way and it's not, now this pontoon here is kind of a trick, but you got to stay concealed. That's the biggest part of it. Another one went down over here, right to the right. We had that flock come over the top of us, set right up and came right in on us, and we got a little itchy on the fingers, I guess, and we're not seeing near as many birds, so we're trying to take the shooting we can later in the day here. Call it a wrap here in southern Missouri today. The clouds moved in, the birds quit flying. We put quite a few birds down this morning. And uh, with them flambeau decoys, I think they helped do the finishing trick on it all. And uh, as you can tell, we got a few here today. I want to thank all the guys for joining me in the blind today. And from Midwest Outdoors, that's a wrap. Good morning, friends. It's Katie and my friend Scotty, and we are out here on the river. We're doing a little bit of walleye and sauger fishing. We're in between seasons in the open water fishing season and ice fishing, so the river's the way to get it done. Fish on! What are you? And he hit it right when... Oh. That's pause. A pause and see, perfect, yeah. perfect example, guys. So this is not a legal catch. So unfortunately, poor guy, I hooked him in the fin. If this was a legal size fish, I would not be able to keep it because it was not hooked in the mouth. So beautiful start to our day, little sauger. We're gonna let him go. So the current's not too aggressive yet here, which is nice because the obviously we haven't gotten any snow, haven't had a lot of rain at all recently, so. What we're trying to do is find the perfect size and weight lure, a jigging wrap, a bladed bait, ripping wrap, something that can get down so we can feel the bottom, crank up a few times, and then work that very end of the water column towards the ground. That's where the fish are hanging out. So for vertical jigging, it's a lot easier, especially with fatigue. You have something shorter, so you get a good hook set. And plus, you're getting ready for ice fishing, so same hook set with all that. Need a net? Yep. Well, I can net it. You got it? DIY? Yep. There we go, I'm getting bigger. Yeah. Right in the mouth for you. A little bit bigger for a keeper though, but nice size. <laughs> <laughs> Got something going. I don't know how big he is. Now he's a little guy. Little guy. Hi, bye. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> nice little dismount. <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest way to release the small ones, right? Don't even bring them in the boat. Efficiency. Finally, it's been a while. <laughs> Something, nothing. Something. I don't know how big it is, it doesn't feel big. No. But, <laughs> it's switched up the strategy, stayed with the right color, went with a heavy kind of spoon setup, and it worked. <laughs> It'll grow eventually. There we go. <laughs> Getting some advice to hold it close to the camera. <laughs> there you go, perfect. <laughs> 
All right, so I'm switching styles up here. The vertical jigging has been kind of slow, so I want to give them a slower presentation. This is what's called the Dubuque rig. So we have a three-way swivel and we have two different lines here. Um, these leaders are fluorocarbon. And what you basically do is you put a heavier weighted jig on a shorter leash, acts as the anchor point, And you put either a plastic or you can use live bait on this. And then this longer line and lighter jig is gonna act as a, a trigger or a teaser, if you will, higher up in the water column for the fish. I don't know, it feels like I got something going. Something? I don't know. Confused. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, buddy. Well, plastics. Guess they like the chartreuse going. And that one was right in the mouth. Little twisty tail guy. Beautiful fish. Get bigger. Well, I'm gonna get you. Get your net here. Oh, good job, Scotty. You got a silk runner. What is it? It looks like a walleye. No. Wow! <laughs> Scotty! Got Whoa! One. Beautiful fish! Oh, right through the side. Now. Nice job! It's a healthy one. We've been trying for walleye all day. First one, we've caught a lot of sauger, but Scotty getting it done with the plastics. One nice, nice. little goldie. Beautiful! I'll get a picture of you too. There she goes. Nice, healthy fish. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Getting it done. Yep, yep, that's heavy. <laughs> Better? Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Slide do his thing. That's a good one. Come on, fishy. Let's see what you are. Let's see. Always love a good fight, that's for sure. <laughs> First fish of the day that's taken some drag off my line, so we'll see uh, see what kind of species we have going. Oh, that's a big kitty. That's a big kitty. Yep, and I'm stuck uh, on Scotty. it. <laughs> that is a very big cat. <sighs> Trying to catch him. Come on. Yay! <laughs> All right, not our target species, but that's okay. Big fish for me, a personal best fish right here, channel catfish. Whoa. Chris Nagy. <laughs> what a beautiful fish. Wow, beautiful fish. Catfish are such aggressive predators too. <laughs> what a beautiful fish. <laughs> Definitely uh, a surprise for us, but that's the river. You never know what you're gonna catch when you're out river fishing. Came out here today with a game plan. It's late November. We were targeting walleye and sauger out on the river, doing some vertical jigging and doing a little bit of drifting and trolling. That's the beauty of the river is you can come out here, you can plan for something, but then you have many different opportunities to target other fish out here. So this is Katie Corget. Stay tuned for more of Midwest Outdoors after this. What would you think if I told you that your entire deer season could be defeated by a $12 part that we always neglect when we go get an oil change? I'm talking about your cabin air filter. You know, we can wear the best camo when we're going out into the field, practice really good sound and light management. We're washing our body and our clothing in scent killer, but that doesn't matter when you're gonna jump in your vehicle that's been marinating in fast food, body odor, and kid stuff for the last year. So a cabin filter is the best way to take care of all of that odor out of your vehicle and it's really really easy to install let me show you now on most modern vehicles your cabin air filter resides behind the glove box and usually it comes out with either two screws right up here or two pins down here I've already removed the pins in this one and your glove box just comes right down and your cabin air filter is going to be right back here you just pop this cover off and you pull out your old filter. Here's the old one, here's the new one. Quite the difference, right? When you install it, make sure that your airflow arrows match up. Now you just reverse the process, reinstall your glove box, 
Maybe hit your seats and your headliner with a little bit of scent killer and you can head out into the field not worrying about dragging out any unexpected odors with you. Hey, I'm Dennis LaPelle and that's another tip on Midwest Outdoors. If you've just got a boat and you're rigging it up, just, just take a little advice. Here's a tip of the week um, from Midwest Outdoors. Um, don't get all your equipment all the way to the back of the boat. In other words, everybody likes to put their downriggers back here. Every time you catch a fish, you have to fight it over the top of that. Get those things up the gunnel a ways like so, so that you can handle the fish in the back corner there. Keep these corners as clear as possible so you got plenty of room to work off the back of the boat in the corners. You don't have to dip fish over the top of your downriggers and stuff. Keep your downrigger mounted up the boat a ways so you can fish behind it. I'm Captain Dave Engel, Best Chance 2. That's another tip, Midwest Outdoors. Midwest Outdoors helps you enjoy the outdoors with expert articles on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Sign up now at MidwestOutdoors.com slash subscribe.